Well, hello everybody. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Uh, so today I'm actually on shift, uh, working a flight shift, and what I want to do is I've actually received uh, several requests to do a series of videos on uh, the new ventilator that has uh, uh, been implemented uh, here where we work, and we are actually transitioning from a uh, tra older transport ventilator known as the CrossVent 4. And uh, we'll be we are now using a one of the newer ventilators and, and actually probably one of the most popular uh, transport type ventilators and it's currently on the market at least in the United States and that is uh, the LTV uh, 1200. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to well I'm going to be doing a series of videos but I want to go ahead and just talk about these uh, obviously uh, the ventilator itself the external characteristics we'll talk about the circuit how to hook it up. And really, just go through a lot uh, the the kind of the the basic um, uh, procedures to setting the ventilator up, initi initiating mechanical ventilation, um, changing between modes, changing between types of ventilation, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to do a, a large amount of theory, however. Um, what I mean by theory is talking about. Uh, managing uh, somebody with a compliance issue, managing oxygenation, managing ventilation, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to be doing these videos with the assumption that uh, the, the person that's watching these videos is already um, uh, fairly well versed in mechanical ventilation management and it's simply a matter of applying what, what they already know simply to a new ventilator. Um, certainly, I have uh, several videos up on uh, managing uh, patients with mechanical ventilation and uh, managing problems of oxygenation and uh, ventilation and so on and so forth. And those same principles of management apply just the same with this uh, ventilator, the LTV 1200. So really, the focus of the, these these videos is to get people familiarized with the LTV 1200 and and how to use some of the basic options. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about... Um, I'm going to go ahead and start by appreciating the uh, external characteristics of the ventilator circuit. This is a circuit uh, specific to the LTV-1200 uh, care fusion. Uh, so what we're looking at right here is the distal end of the circuit. It's actually hooked to a test lung right now. And what we like to do is we like to actually attach an HME. It's known as a heat and moisture exchanger. Um, also known as an artificial nose, and then actually attached to the end of this connection known as the Y. You can see that I have my flow transducing tubing here. Uh, the, the ventilator actually produces about 10 liters per minute of what's known as bias flow. Um, it's constantly flowing through the circuit, and that allows, of course, um, for triggering, because uh, this ventilator does trigger off of flow as averse uh, to uh, pressure, which we're actually common. We're probably very familiar with pressure triggering, not so familiar with a flow triggering. Um, so being able to make that uh, differentiation is going to be important. Um, so in any event, uh, this will actually attach um, to the distal end of the endotracheal tube. And what this does is this actually um, collects uh, some of the exhaled heat and moisture uh, from the patient and, and in essence uh, recirculates. It's very similar to what's known as a balaclava, if any of you are familiar with the cold um, weather environments. Uh, it's a very similar principle. And again, because I have a patient who's intubated, I've actually bypassed their upper airway and uh, most of the heating humidification occurs in the upper airways and of course uh, we're essentially delivering cold gas through the ventilator into our patient. Uh, of course, we know that cold gas uh, can not only impair the mucociliary uh, escalator transport mechanism, but it is also um, it can cause uh, a whole constellation of uh, problems associated with our patients. So, uh, while an HME is certainly not ideal and it cannot provide 100% uh, body humidity uh, uh, nor 100% uh, um, efficiency in, in heat, um, it's certainly better than nothing. Um, so looking at the rest of the tubing here, what I actually have is I'll show you uh, where it's connected to the ventilator itself. Of course, I have a HEPA filter here. Um, the ventilator delivers gas through the tube here, and I'm following the inspiratory limb of it all the way through. It goes into the patient, and then it'll come out through here through the expiratory limb. And, of course, I have my, my little expiratory sensor, and this is actually where I have my PEEP. Um, something to be very uh, mindful of is this little plastic connector here. This little plastic connector slides into the, in the side of the ventilator here 
and it's very important that if this gets lost for some reason, this ventilator is in essence useless because this will not connect to the ventilator without that plastic connector. Uh, so it's very important we, we be mindful of where that connector is. If you look on the side of the ventilator here, um, this is where I have my transducer um, uh, tubing, my flow transducing tubing uh, connected to the ventilator in addition to the expiratory uh, sensing tubing. Um, so this collectively makes a circuit and we'll go ahead and talk about the uh, ventilator proper uh, here in just a little bit. Well, hello everyone, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. We're just taking a look at the ventilator proper and I'll show you uh, just a couple more uh, components of the ventilator. So if you see over here, and hopefully I can get this turned around where we can see on the side here, um, this is where I have my air inlet. There's a little filter in here and we just need to monitor that filter and, and change that out um, if it becomes dusty and um, every, you know, every so often obviously uh, there should be a protocol in place or a, a guideline in place as far as, far as how often we, we would check that filter, but um, that is something that needs to be checked periodically. You can see where my battery plugs in, and you can see these two little cable plug um, um, inlets here, and this is actually if I had a graphics package for this ventilator, which they do make a graphics package, um, those cables would plug into here and I could actually monitor ventilator graphics. The ventilators in their current configuration do not have a graphics package, but they're easily converted to have a graphics package. Correspond to the distal tubes here are flow, pressure, trigger transducers. And you can see that they're actually color coded. I'm going to set this down here. Uh, so yellow goes here. The Let's see if we can see that better. So the yellow one is going to go in the middle here. The white one will go over here. And the one without a hub will go all the way to the right here. So um, this is exhalation valve. This is These are the flow transducers. Now, it's very tempting to just come in and just screw it in directly. But what happens is when I screw it in directly, that kind of torques this line and makes it real prone to unscrewing itself. So what... I would recommend is to actually twist it like so, if you guys can see what I'm doing, twist it, line it up, and then it'll screw itself in, and you can see that there's a little bit of torque on there um, in, the, in the direction of the thread, um, kind of locking in place. That'll make it much less likely um, to become dislodged and undone, and that's actually one of the most common alarms um, is, is a disconnect from here. Um, I'll also do the same thing with this here, so it actually screws on like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just twist it and kind of back screw it, if you will. And then it's going to want to go ahead and screw itself into place. It locks in tight. And then the third line um, is simply just slide into place. And I now have the tubing so here we are looking at the front of the LTV-1200. This is the actual ventilator itself, and this is the uh, package that it comes in, or that the, the, um, the, the pack that uh, we will be using with the ventilator here where we fly. Uh, there are obviously different configurations. Uh, so uh, right here what we're actually looking at is a battery pack. This contains two batteries, and the battery uh, pack actually connects uh, to the ventilator here uh, through this little connection and goes into the ventilator. The ventilator does have an internal battery but you only get about uh, an hour of life out of that battery. Uh, you're getting anywhere in the neighborhood of, uh, of approximately six hours when we use the battery pack so we'll always be using a battery so pack. So again batteries connect to the uh, ventilator on the side here and then the battery pack itself has another connector um, and then it just goes to uh, the, uh, the converter or the floor source. For you to unplug this unplug this and then it is possible to actually plug the battery pack into itself if this were to plug in to this here um, that would uh, potentially be catastrophic because the batteries would be plugged into themselves I would have a potential moving across here and then obviously the batteries could overheat and